So we're just going to take a little, a little peek, peek at what's on the inside of this now. And uh, I'm going to show you, first of all, how easy it is just to get these props off. Oh, just pull them off. You pull them off and push them on. Now there's one thing. Ooh, that was a very stiff prop. There's a little tool that you get with this uh, to help get these off. And of course I've lost it because... <clears throat> But these things can be quite easy to lose, but no mind what you need is that. Go with a screwdriver or something with a bit of a flat end on it. Be nice to have the little hooky hooky thing. But you can still get it off. Don't, you know, do it too far over on one side. Because you could just end up bending the, the pin in the middle of this the motor shaft. But that's very soft compared. So that one, but this one's a newer one, or at least it feels like it, or maybe that is. This one feels very soft there. Again, this one's a bit of a problem to get off, so we're just going to have to get underneath there and just give it a little tiny bit of uh, assistance. Now I've had to change a couple of props because I had mangled them up a bit. This one looks like this is starting to go on its way a little bit, but nowhere near as bad as the other two. I will find them during this video and show you. Now this one's got a bunch of speakers, uh, bunch of speakers, major screws underneath. Nothing underneath here. I'm hoping that I can just pull this out without messing around. So let's just get this open. Now this is my little favourite. It, it is just so much fun to fly around, and getting the batteries, getting spare batteries for it is easy. Of Amazon, I bought, bought five of these with a you know, five-way charger for them, uh, 15 pounds. And it's fantastic because, you know, one battery for a plane with these is just not really enough. Not really enough. And you can fly this outside, uh, but you want to have low wind if you can. You've only got two inch propellers. Well, they might be slightly over two inches, but they're not much bigger than two inches. You know, an inch aside, <clears throat> gives you a bit of an indication to how small this thing is, but it's it's tiny. It's, but it's a fantastic little thing to fly. So let's pull this off. Now, one of the things I'm really pleased about with this is let's pull that off. <clears throat> is a uh, how accessible everything is really, you know, just those four little screws and there's not a lot really to see in here, is there? There's definitely one of those nothing to see here moments. Really, we've got a screw there and we're going to undo that now. Oh, I'll try not to damage anything. It's very easily accessible for the... Uh, Is it the same as the other ones? Yep, all the screws are the same. That's always a nice thing. Uh, now we're going to have a look on the other side of this. All right, well, I didn't expect to see that as an antenna there. But that's our antenna. Um, all right, we've got our little, our little barometer down here. I want to see that. It's got a little pin hole in it and this one we're assuming is the flight well it is I mean it is the flight controller and you're going to have some little tiny transistors some little tiny MOSFETs I expect for just powering the motors you've got to bunch of MOSFETs here. I'm going to assume that they're MOSFETs. Um, well, I'm just going to say transistor because it's... Uh, <clears throat> okay, well, I'm going to see if we can see something on here. Let's have a look. It looks like there's markings on there and like on the other one. And it's a different form to the one here. You see that on the back? Mm, I don't know. Let's have a look what we got. Hold 
I need to look through for, for both of these. Not quite enough magnification for me, just the one. PAN163CX. Let's look that up. Okay, so we've got this uh, pan chip PAN163. Six three CX two point four gigs wireless transceiver microcontroller. All right, from what I can see on this, I don't know if it'll let us go in any bigger. No, but it gives you the layout here. Gives you all the pin pinouts. Um, not a layout, sorry, but the pinout. What else have we got in here? W three seven E. 7E uh, Okay I may not be able to find that that sort of chip, I mean you know but it's such a, a tiny little board like hardly anything on there but this is uh, I mean imagine that you could take this out of here and fix these to some I don't know, lollipop sticks and you get yourself a little flying system you know it's crazy isn't that that's all there is really and now one of the reasons why I really wanted to look at this was because of the um, because of the motors and I can put that in there I can stick a hole in it and pop it have it popping out the top I'm not going to bother but the motors and the reason why I wanted to know if these motors were going to be interchangeable with my Sima because when I first got my Sima I expected to be getting through lots of motors and lots of years and so you know I've got a bag of bit gears and all sorts of uh, spares for my Simon. Let's see where it is. It's quite a big bag as well, full of full of stuff that I've never never needed. I just bought it as a, a pack of like, spare stuff off uh, eBay for the Simon. Mm, it's not to hand, but in there came motors. I bought lots of pairs of motors because because uh, that's what I thought I'd be getting through it. But I've hardly got through any. And it's such a shame, but now I've come to realise that these motors are the exact same thing. These motors are the exact same thing. The only difference is here is that these have got this this bit on, but you can you can take that off that cog thing. I wouldn't throw it away because people sell them. But this is the exact same motor, so I'm chuffed as punch. Because it means I've got issues with my motors already. I fly around a lot of time in the prop yards. I do hit things. Uh, this thing, when it hits something, will shoot off all over the place sometimes. And, you know, so it's good to. Because the motors are going to get mashed up a bit. But it's just fantastic that I've got all these spares. Because that means this for me is a true winner. Um, one, because of the spare thing. I know I'm going to be getting through motors at some stage. Uh, I did worry that maybe these were like glued in or something, but fortunately they're not. One or two of them are very tight, but that's all right. I can work with that. I know that they'll still come out. Um, yeah, amazing. So these were the little LEDs are then. So these would be the red LEDs at the back here, and these would be the white LEDs at the front, which is another reason why I like this. Orientation is fantastic. It's exactly what you'd expect it to be. You know, white at the front, red at the back, and so the orientation is very easy uh, to be able to see. I do like that. Um, the three settings on the remote. One of the crazy things about the remote is that it's so big. Look, when you look compared to this, but th these remotes I don't like. They're like Xbox controllers. You don't get enough. You don't. You don't. You know. You can take that off and try and put something on there. I did. Uh, I don't know what I've done with that. Probably chipped in the ashtray because it's uh, it came off. But it was basically just trying to give it a stick that won't actually fit on there because the hole's not big enough. 
because it's it, it's not as easy. I mean, if you're used to this sort of thing for an Xbox type thing, that's all well and good for an Xbox and moving around low resolution, but you need something with a bit more controllability. Honestly, it's the stick thing you want. If uh, you're going to get into this and you're going to get into your FPV, you're going to find your radio um, and your receiving gear is going to be the stuff that you know, whether it be a headset or a nice screen or something, it's going to be the stuff that you want to spend a bit of money on. You know, get your radio right because you want it. You want a lot of control, um, and the more intricate stuff you want, the more control you want. Like you know, there's one thing from doing this to this. There's another thing from doing this to here, and then there's another from just holding it down the bottom and doing very slight movements. But again, you know, I, I do mine a, a hybrid, so it just means I got full. I can sort of like you know, keep things where I want it to be and just move along and do. That's me, but that's the best way to do it. If you if you're going to get into this as a hobby FPV and you want sticks, when you look for your little uh, little fly around the home house thing, because you want something like this, because flying around the house is going to give you the ability to uh, just get all that hand to eye coordination in. In the relaxing, you get a whole bunch of, you know, I've got a five pack of these, like I said, it came with a battery, five pack of these. And this is going to give you plenty, you know, take a 10 minute break between flights because it's, the motors are going to just get hotter and hotter and they'll burn out. And uh, you don't want that. So take a 10 minute break, besides, it's quite good. Get through your batteries and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll learn loads. You'll learn loads. This uh, we're flying that up. Look, I'm going to put this thing up on the up on the screen here. I can't remember how long how long it runs for. So it's about a few minutes. I think what I'll do is I'll just uh, chop this, put this in here. Ah, welcome back. So there's just a little tiny bit of flying around like that. Look, that's in and out the windows. That's yeah, simple enough. You see, it's got the guards on it and it bounces off a little tiny bit. So well, there we go. Nice and easy. Um, that frame has the battery holder built into it. I've seen these, and you can pick these up uh, very cheap. Uh, these little frames, but as you can see, the whole thing is. Uh, I, I'm sure that it's going to be very hard. Really, I would have thought to break um, this board uh, because one of the things about the the, the propellers is. Because they already slot on, there's going to be a, a, a certain amount of resistance. You know, it's, it's, uh, you're not going to have to. It's, I, I doubt if it's going to burn out the motor so much. The propeller's more likely to spin in here than be so much of a stress that it burns out the motor, which is another good thing. That's if it does work out like that. But if it does work out like that, that's a bonus in itself rather than burning out motors. And of course, with these things now, uh, unlike the Simer, which has got none of this, uh, you know, uh, button to take off, button to land, malarkey, or uh, any of the um, the barometer in it or anything like that. It's got none of that. Uh, and don't get me wrong, it's still a great thing to fly because, to be honest with you, the more you can fly with just manual controls, no, no assistance, the better. The better. It's always all right to have the assistance there, but if you need it and you don't have it, you can find yourself in a bit of a tight spot. That's my... Uh, my thinking on it, that's why I always uh, like to fly manual and um, or quite low. Just because I know if I crash then, and I tend to when it's low, but if I crash then, um, I'm not going to, I'm just going to do minimal. Minimal, if any, damage at all. I'm really struggling to get that in the hole. It seems to have a, there we go. A bit of a mind of its own, which has now been defeated, or at least I thought it was. I'm starting to think if that's actually got the hole there or not, because I know it only had one in one, and there's a good possibility that could have come from there. That's got a hole there that does not have a hole, the actual hole itself there. I don't think oh, it does have a hole. Sorry, let me just pull that in. Is that a hole or not? It does have a hole. And on the other side, does it have a hole or not? It, uh, it does have a hole. That one looks like it's a deeper thing for the screw, so I've got a funny feeling it's going to go in there. So let's try again. Now they're all the same size screws. 
Oh, and I'm sorry that I didn't uh, rebuild the other one. Before, people might think, oh, I wonder if it still works. But yeah, it still works. Nothing, nothing wrong with it apart from its controller thing. There we go. I think that's screwed in that up. Oh, no, it's not. What well, is this turning out to be quite difficult just to put it back in again? It's just getting into that little. It's that little hole. Seems to be afraid of me. There we go. We're in. I don't want to do it up too tight, see, because I don't want to break the thread on it. And these things, you gotta remember, it's just very thin, light plastics, really, so it's gonna be very easy to, uh, to damage it. Just trying to see if we can get these. Wires out the way of the LED so you've got nice clear visuals because it really does help with orientation, uh, especially flying line of sight, of course. And try and get it in as well in such a way that when I put the screws back in, it doesn't uh, doesn't either trap the wire or get the the screw to screw through the wire. Of course, we don't want that. That's going to cause a problem. That could be the sort of thing that might damage, not, hopefully it's protected the board from that sort of thing. Right, just trying to get that out of the way there. I hope that's good to go, it should be near enough there. Uh, they got a push underneath. Uh, there's like a little, little slots that that has to sort of slide into. Bit of a okay. Make sure that the wires are in. Well, I'm just going to push it over the top and just push it down into it. And well, it's a damn sight harder to put it in this time around than what it was. No, maybe it's not. It just seemed like it was being a bit more awkward. I think I'm just worried about going through the wires. Yeah, so uh, I'm just gonna put those screws back in. Oh. I don't think it helps that this has got a magnetic tip. But then I'd hope that the one that came with it would have as well. Here's the one that came with it. Try and see if anything can be a bit more behaved, but nope. It's just as a. Uh, I really do prefer this one. Really, really do. So we got snow and stuff coming to my my area over the next day or two. Then comes the old winter. Yeah, on these bits, rather than you know, if you're just going to put it on, and what you've got to be able to do is a. Uh, just pull up the arm a little bit and sort of like get that little tab thing to to slot in if you can. I think that one's gone in. Yeah. Otherwise it would just be sticking down. I don't know what else. I mean, I've looked at lots of these little tiny micro uh, drones. And I don't know uh, about you guys out there, but for in my home, all I want is something that I can't do any damage with. I've got a couple of cats, and uh, I don't want to startle those. Ow! And I don't want to stab myself. Too much of that. Um, even though my one cat just doesn't care at all. About that little, I'm sure if I put the uh, the Simon on, he'd be running off, just like the other one runs off. 
Never crashed into them before, but I can imagine, you know, it's a little bit weird from. Doesn't know what I'm sort of looking through the screen a lot of the time. I'm trying to make sure I can still see that they're all, they're all magnetised around that screwdriver head. Yes, that's what I'd like to say about this. It's a, I reckon it's a cracking little flyer. Uh, I use it on speed one inside the house. Um, it's definitely lively. And you put it on speed two and speed three, you get a lot more pitch uh, and roll, which of course that makes the whole thing a lot more nimble. And um, best played with like that outside, I would have thought. I'm just got one little one to go there, it's a strong magnetic. At least it feels like that. Let's push all those motors back down. Prop its propellers back on. Ah, uh, no, the front was white, wasn't it? And the um, the propellers are like on the normal quads, like on the quads that we build behind up and stuff, so, the, so that's very easy to get on that one. Uh, and so, yeah, so the, the tops could face inside, lead an edge, and the, uh, and the bottom ones face the outside. Okay, let's chuck this battery in, I presume it's going to be okay. So I've got a, a bunch of them ready to go. Now this uh, does actually jump up in the air when you arm it. So even though we're not supposed to do this, we are going to. We've got a clear above us. So we're armed and we're ready to fly. You see how they can go a bit nuts when you, um, I'm glad that <laughs> the motor stuck to the motor. Uh, and that's the only thing with them, when they're doing something out of the ordinary, yeah, you can expect it to, uh, you know, boom, and then start doing a bit, bit crazy. But like I say, uh, it's so small, so light. The way it's lit up like on the front there, look brilliant. You can see it coming towards you, you can see it going away, and you can tell from a distance, like from one room into the next room, uh, it's orientation which makes it absolutely great. Uh, of course, flying around the home isn't easy. Uh, it's not something, I mean it is, but you, you, you're always going to have the fear of crashing. Or not the fear of crashing, you're always going to be aware that you can crash easy. But I suppose that's just part and parcel of it all, so yeah. There we go. Oh, and I found out there's a button here. This is so you can trigger it to do a, uh, oh, what would you call it when, it when it goes around itself like this. Yeah, one of those. Maybe tomorrow. Oh no, we've got snow for the next couple of days. 75 kilometer an hour wind. So this isn't going to be going outside. Uh, but we'll have to get around to showing that I've not even done it myself yet how that works I didn't even know what this was I had to look in the manual because I kept doing that thing what else going on what was going on and, uh, and it cancels when you do that but I didn't know I didn't know what it was for I looked in the manual again anyway that's it that's the end of that uh, next one that's coming is going to be in turning so we're getting on to the INAF stuff again okay catch you in the next one guys thanks for watching